Five Minute with Eric. So my name is Eric Rodebois. I'm a business lawyer in Miami, Florida, and I work with a lot of different clients. I think I'm industry agnostic. So this particular story is how to structure a company correctly when you're buying real estate. So let me tell you this, the fact pattern. So I got a client. Um, it's two guys. And the two guys are, are pretty organized. I can tell that they're diligent. I can tell they're tedious. And they are um, in the engineering industry, right? So that's exactly the type of person you want to be an engineer. And so they've got a business um, and it's operating. So I start peeling back the layers of the onion and I ask them a question and I'm like, okay, so let's first things first. And this is how I always start when I'm working with a client is I, I get out a pad of paper and I get out a pen and I literally start drawing it. Okay, so um, let's just call them A and B. So A and B, right? And then I was like, okay, so tell me about your company. So their company, this engineering company, what do I wanna know? I wanna know, is it an LLC or a corporation? That's one of my first questions. So this one's an LLC. Then I wanna know what state it's organized in. This one's organized in Florida. By the way, I'm writing all this down on my thing. Um, then I want to know how it's taxed. Now it's amazing. A lot of times people don't know how it's taxed, right? Like these guys are engineers. They're not accountants. And by the way, I know they're accountants. Um, that's another thing I always say, do you guys have an accountant? And they said, yes. And I asked who it was. And it turns out it's someone that I've known for a really long time. So that's great. Um, and they have a great reputation. And so I'm like, okay, well, obviously I know if I ever have questions about the taxes, I can just go to the accountant, but you know, by my powers of deduction, I, I can actually figure it out 95% of the time. So I'm like, okay. So who owns the engineering company? And they're like, oh, well, our holding company owns that. Okay, so now I've got company number two. And as you can see, I'm building it up. So we go from the bottom to the top or from the top to the bottom. So the owners at the top, so the owners own something and then something and then something. So I could say down here are engineering clients. All right, so same process. I ask them, is it an LLC or a corporation, LLC? I ask them what state it is, Florida. Then I ask them how it's taxed. And again, they had no idea. Um, now, what I can tell by my powers of deduction is the chances are this lower company, this is the bottom company. That's what I confirmed. And I was like, this company doesn't own any other companies. And they're like, no. All right, so this bottom company is probably, and I say 95% chance, taxed as a sole proprietorship pass-through, meaning that it's not gonna file a tax return, it's not gonna be pay any taxes, at least for income taxes, and so any money that this company generates is gonna flow through directly to this one. Now then I start asking questions, okay, who owns the, the holding company? And they're like, oh, well, each of our individual companies own the holding company. So now I gotta go through the same exercise again, right? So now I've got the individual companies, and I'm like, okay, what is it? LLC, what state, Florida, how's it taxed? I don't know. And then I ask them, okay, out of this whole structure, how do you guys get paid? And by the way, this is what it looks like. A owns a company. A company is a co-owner of holding company. Holding company owns engineering company. B owns B company, owns holding company, owns engineering company. And down here, I put engineering clients all the way at the bottom. So you can imagine the money flow, right? So the client pays their fees, then this company generates income and expenses, and then so whatever profit then flows to the holding company, I confirm that the holding company does nothing. So it's not gonna be getting money from any other source other than contributions going down from the owners or revenues coming up from down here at the engineering clients. So it comes up to the holding company, then it goes to um, their individual companies. And then I ask them, for your individual companies, how do you get paid? And they say, oh, well, the money flows up to our individual companies and then we have payroll. And so what that means is that they've set up payroll so that they get a paycheck every two weeks like an employee and they get a W-2. And that answers all my questions. The only way that they can get a payroll is if this is either a C Corp or an S Corp. Now, interestingly, an LLC can be taxed as a C Corp or it can be taxed as an S Corp. Now, I did this whole analysis actually right here on this dry erase board. It's actually right there right now. But I did this whole analysis where I showed that actually sometimes a C-Corp, so C-Corp has the famous double taxation. What that means is the C-Corp is gonna file a tax return on its profit and it's gonna pay 21% taxes. Now, before you arrive at profit, the owners can take out salary, right? So that salary would then be taken as an expense of the company and then they would individually have to pay taxes as individuals. But then if they wanted to take a dividend from the company, then that 
that dividend is going to get taxed at 21% and then go on their personal tax return and get taxed again. So what I did in this analysis is I showed that if a company intends on retaining its earnings, meaning I'm not going to take all the money out of the company and I want to leave it in there because maybe I'm saving up to buy something big or maybe I have a big uh, initiative I want to do next year, that the C Corp actually can be a much more effective lower tax rate than the S Corp. So let's talk about the S Corp for a second. S Corps have to be owned by U.S. persons, not U.S. companies and not foreign people or companies. So they're owned by U.S. persons. That's one of the limitations. And then what happens is the S Corp is a pass through, meaning it's not going to pay taxes. Um, but the owners are allowed to do things like take a salary versus a uh, partnership, which is the default way that an LLC is taxed, where the owners can't take a salary and 100 percent of the profit is treated as self-employment income to the owners. So in the S Corp, I can take out, let's say, 50% as a salary, I'll pay self-employment or I'll pay em employment taxes, which is about 15% on that part. And then anything else um, I will take as a distribution is not subject to self-employment taxes. So traditionally, before the Trump tax bill in, what was that, 2018, traditionally the S-Corp was the, the normal way that small businesses owner-operated uh, chose to be taxed. Now it's interesting. Now with the C-Corp, there's a lot of other alternatives. So again, I'm not 100% positive that these companies here are S-Corps or C-Corps. I'm guessing 95% that they are S-Corps. I'm guessing 95% that this is a partnership. And I'm guessing 95% that this is a sole proprietorship. Um, okay, so now I've got the whole structure. Now let me give you the big caveat. In order to make this work, you got to make sure that you're doing your annual reports every year for every company. You gotta make sure you're doing corporate documentation, doing things like having annual meetings and keeping minutes. And most importantly, keeping separate books and records and bank accounts, right? So what happens is they need to have three bank accounts or four. Each company needs to have its own bank account and they need to treat them separately. So for example, the engineering, if a client pays the engineering company, they have to deposit it there first. They can't just deposit it into the holding company and skip a step. Or they can't just say, hey, let me take 50% from the client right away and just deposit it there. You need to go through the formalities of step by step by step. And if you don't, here's what happens. You get sued. So let's say one of the engineering clients is upset. The engineering client is going to sue the engineering company. But let's say that the assets are not enough to pay off that judgment. So now we're going to be in a post-judgment situation and they're going to be trying to pierce the corporate veil. And what they're going to do is they're going to get their hands on the bank records and they're going to see that it's all commingled. And they're going to say to a judge, hey, judge, let me go after everybody. Don't let, don't leave it just here. And now I've just eliminated limited liability. So I know this is complicated. I know I went over my time. So please, if you're thinking about setting up one of these holding company structures, put a comment below and we can set up a call. Thank you.